Hey guys, it's Brian from Eline Media. I'm one of the original designers behind the National STEM Video Game Challenge. We get a lot of questions about how the judging process works and the things that the judges look at when they play your games. So I thought I would give you guys a little behind the scenes of that process. In this video, I'll talk a little bit about the judging process itself and some things you can think about before you submit. We'll post another video soon with more details about the criteria that we use when we judge your submissions, but for now we'll just talk about the process. The judging process has two stages. We call the first one screening. In this phase, the people on the STEM Challenge team play every single entry and read every single design document that we receive. Our goal here is to take all the thousands of games you submit and narrow them down to the finalists. That's the top five to ten games in each of the challenge categories. Based on our past experience, that's less than one in every 50 games that we receive. So you can see it's a very selective process to get things down to the best of the best. In the second phase, which we call expert judging, the finalist games in each category get reviewed and scored by three distinguished judges. These are people who work in the games industry, they make successful games you've probably heard of, and also some other folks like scholars of game design, STEM experts, educators, and representatives of the challenge sponsors. Each judge rates each of the finalist games in his or her category. We take the ratings, turn them into a score, add them up into a combined score from all of the judges, and the game with the highest combined score is the challenge winner for that category. So during both screening and final judging, your game is only competing against other games in the same age group and category. So games made by individual middle school students with GameStar Mechanic aren't competing against open platform games made by high school teams. And written game design documents aren't competing against playable games. Also, the screeners and judges don't know anything about you when they play your game, like your name, your gender, or where you're from. When your game is being evaluated, the screeners and judges are considering only the three judging criteria that we talk about in the challenge rules. Engaging gameplay, innovative creative vision, and well-balanced gameplay. As I mentioned, we'll talk about what those mean in another video, but here's how they get applied. If you submit a playable game, we play the game, and we rate it according to those three criteria. If you submit a written design document, we think about what the actual game you designed would be like if it got made, and we rate that game according to the criteria. And also, the three criteria have equal weighting in the judging process, because having all three is really important to making a good game. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how judging works. Here are a few more things you can think about before you submit. Number one, your game's design and the story and characters all have to be original. So don't enter a game that just copies another game. And no games like with Mario or Harry Potter. If you submit a game like that, it will be disqualified. Number two, make sure to check your game for spelling, grammar, typos, and bugs. And don't just use spell check, look at it yourself, or better yet, test it with real players. Lots of mistakes here make it really hard to get into a game, and they can affect your game's engaging gameplay score when our judges and screeners look at it. Number three, think about your game's title. What you call your game is literally the first thing that players and judges will see about it. So don't waste that opportunity to get us engaged right at the beginning. Number four, if you're designing a game for a specific audience, let's say you're designing a game for little kids, first of all, that's fantastic. Second, it's probably a good idea to include with your playable game a short written game design document that talks about who the audience is. That makes it much easier for our judges to understand that and look at the game through that audience's eyes. Finally, and most importantly, before you submit your game, ask yourself this question. Is my game fun? Even if your game has great STEM content or an interesting story or it's beautiful visually and technically amazing, it isn't going to win the challenge if it isn't actually fun to play. So thanks for listening, and of course, make sure to check out www.stemchallenge.org for more information about the submission process, the official rules, and tips on tools and resources you can use to make your games better. Good luck.